good afternoon everybody now once again dr kator is going to deliver a talk for you our speaker dr kator is requested to come on the dais uh, dr kator is a versatile genius he is having multifaceted experience he started his career as teacher in the ayurvedic system medicine he has worked as a physician in uh, under chs scheme federal government health scheme he was uh, in the ministry for about 18 years in the mean time he was deputed to government to, sorry uh, who also he has worked over there so he is a good teacher he is a good researcher he is a good policy maker all the qualities if you can see in one person he is none other than dr kotoj and now dr kotoj is requested to please start his talk uh, good afternoon i think uh, again you are going to dominate me because since i am from the ministry so whatever uh, ministry is doing for traditional medicine i am going to speak on that only so in the previous session uh, i speak on i spoke on uh, how the traditional medicines are regulated how the manufacturing units of traditional medicine they are regulated and in this particular session we are going to uh, see what is the good manufacturing practices uh, this is very important because unless you follow the good manufacturing practices means the practices which are standardized the practices which are standardized unless those are followed uh, you cannot achieve the quality in the medicines so uh, if you see uh, the, the strategy for the traditional medicine for the development of the traditional medicine the global strategy or the who strategy for the development of the traditional medicines there are four pillars the first pillar is the policy so when i say policy policy also includes the governance structure the administration as well as the the regulatory framework so that comes under the policy part and then the second is the safety efficacy quality so we use the term safety efficacy quality separately but if you say quality safety and efficacy are subsumed in quality when you say quality it means it has to be safe it has to be uh, it has to be effective only then it is a quality product otherwise not and the third thing is uh, which is the third pillar of the traditional medicine uh, as per the who strategy for traditional medicine uh, that is the rational use so rational use of a product or rational use of a system can only be promoted if you have quality service quality product quality practitioner and the quality education this is important and the fourth point is and the fourth pillar is that is accessibility so four things uh, the policy safety efficacy quality the rational use and the accessibility so uh, we would be dealing here the second part uh, the second pillar of the traditional medicine strategy and uh, that is the good manufacturing practices so that the quality product should go to the people should go to the market for the trade and uh, within the country outside the country now what is gmp good manufacturing practices it is a system means a set of guidelines for ensuring that the products are consistently produced and controlled according to quality standards the standard is the prerequisite for regulation unless you have standards what you will regulate so first of all the standards are required so in the case of drugs the standards of the raw materials standards of the manufacturing processes standards of the finished product and the standards for storing the products how long they can be stored means the, the stability the uh, shelf life so all those things they come under the standards and if you have the standards only then or you can check whether the products are complying to those standards or not so this so gmp is the system for ensuring that the products are consistently produced and controlled according to quality standards 
and in other words we can say that it is a set of principles and procedures which when followed by manufacturers for therapeutic goods means the medicinal products or the drugs they these uh, these guidelines or these are uh, the set of these principles and procedures they help to ensure that the products are manufactured the products which are manufactured will have the required quality or the expected quality quality can never be achieved by chance it is not a accidental outcome you have to put in efforts so what is the objective of the gmp uh, guideline means right from the beginning to the finished products the raw materials which are used in the preparation of the medicines they must be authentic they must be of prescribed quality and where the quality is prescribed the quality is prescribed in the pharmacopoeia and they are they should be free from any contamination today across the globe the people the regulators they are more worried about the impurities rather than the purities because the contamination or the impurities they 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 are not safe they are not safe for the human beings if a product containing contamination a uh, contaminants or some adulterants or if some spurious material is there means those products they are not safe so important and second is manufacturing processes are standardized and adhered to first of all you need down uh, you need to lay down the standards for manufacturing what is the procedure how a particular product is to be manufactured there would be different steps so those steps need to be standardized and if you follow those standards automatically the product it is obvious that the product will be of the quality of the desired quality and third is adequate quality control measures are adopted from the starting materials to the end of the manufacturing right from start of the manufacturing to the end of the manufacturing means manufacturing also includes uh, the packing what kind of packing material you are using the internal material which you put in the pack and the outside material and where those packs are uh, are uh, uh, preserved or kept this is also important and the fourth is the manufactured medicine released for sale is of acceptable quality when it goes out of the manufacturing premises again it should be of acceptable quality quality means acceptable to the regulator acceptable to the consumer and acceptable to the practitioner now who has given this a uh, very broad definition of uh, gmp who is the body which lays down standards which lays down guidelines for the member countries and those they are adopted by the member countries but they in the process they also make certain modifications and changes as per the circumstances and the needs of the country the WHO guidelines they are never mandatory these are only the guidelines well, they guide the country government okay, on in this template or in this format you can also develop your own guidelines or your regulatory standards so when i say standards there are two types of standards one are the regulatory standards second is the technical standards regulatory standards are like nobody can manufacture a drug without license so this is a regulatory standard but how to make a drug means you can make a drug by following the standards given in the pharmacopoeia so it is a technical standard okay so those these are so who defines good manufacturing practices as that part of quality assurance which ensures that products are consistently produced consistently means their quality is same you cannot have batch to batch variation consistently of the same quality of the same safety of the same efficacy and control to the quality standards appropriate to their intended use and as required for the market authorization meaning the standards the quality of that product the finished product if that product has been manufactured as per the who gmp guidelines means that fit for market authorization fit for to be allowed by the regulator that okay you can bring this product to the market what is what is uh, within the domain of uh, uh, gmp what comes under gmp gmp covers all aspects of the manufacturing process all aspects defined manufacturing process means you will have to define first means uh, you cannot have a, a manufacturing process of your own it has to be prescribed somewhere right 
and that is called SOP standard operating procedure then the validated critical manufacturing steps means like at the intermediate stage in the beginning and the finished product you need to validate that whether that desired quality has been achieved or not suitable premises the manufacturing premises should be suitable and what are suitable premises these are these are defined in the different drug act like in uh, i will speak on how this uh, uh, indian drugs and cosmetic act how they have defined the premises uh, suitable premises storage facilities transport uh, the qualified and trained personnel for production and quality control means in the quality control section you cannot uh, keep a person who is not skilled who is not trained who is not having the the qualification proper qualification then educate laboratory facilities for the testing of the drugs at different levels in the beginning in the in intermediate stage in the, uh, the uh, uh, that uh, final stage is when the product is uh, totally manufactured then there must be approved the written procedures for every, even for testing even for the persons who are working there means they need to be checked medically uh, frequently or the uh, periodically their health condition right and the instruction different instruction then the maintenance of record maintenance of the record documentation that is the that is the hallmark of gmp that's the backbone of gmp everything has to be done whether right or whether wrong whether related to related to process everything has to be documented so the workers who are working in the factory they should follow those things so to show all steps of defined procedure full traceability of the product so if the product is coming out of the factory there must be full traceability from where the product has come when this has come who manufactured that what was the date what was the time to and what were the ingredients from where those materials were taken so all these need passport data complete passport data of the product batch to batch it does not mean that all uh, all the things are complying are being compliant but in the next batch you don't do that no in every batch it has to be done means for every batch of the product uh, this uh, batch records are required and the distribution records where that product was distributed to which market it goes uh, went whether it went to varanasi or whether it went to delhi which batch number everything so that if something wrong happens to a person and if that person or that consumer wants to make a report uh, adverse uh, reaction report or so that could be traced and the systems for recall and investigation of the complaints all that, that has to be recorded so a very comprehensive uh, domain is there uh, uh, under gmp so this is the book uh, which was published by who in 2003 2004 and after that many countries they have adopted uh, this template the who guidelines for the herbal products now one thing is uh, a, a quite a different uh, that uh, who guidelines for gmp who gmp guidelines these are for herbal medicines but in traditional medicines we also make use of minerals we also make use animal products or the non herbal materials also so these guidelines are not applicable to those kinds of products So from government of india we have requested who just a few days back we have requested because many of our products they are going uh, out of india they are meant from uh, they are uh, they are uh, manufactured from non herbal ingredients so we want that kind of guidelines also that how the mineral products of traditional medicines or the animal product based formulations how those can also be uh, manufactured or like that so this is the document and this is the manufacturer responsibility to comply to the gmp guidelines the lies well, this is uh, true to our our uh, uh, condition indian conditions means how we are regulating uh, the uh, the uh, ayurveda siddha yunani and homeopathy drugs the gmp for homeopathic medicines also there we have gmp for ayurveda siddha yunani uh, both uh, both the schedules are different means uh, the gmp guidelines for homeopathic medicines are different from gmp guidelines from uh, uh, the ayurveda siddha uh, yunani medicines so license fact because without license nobody can manufacture a commercial product so for commercial manufacturing of the products means of ayurveda siddha yunani you must get you need to obtain a license from the licensing authority and the licensed manufacturer is expected to evolve 
methodologies and procedures for following the prescribed process of manufacturing of medicines. So if a license has been given, then it is the responsibility of the manufacturer to create those facilities in the manufacturing premises, to create those documents, means the SOPs, and to install the equipment, required equipment, everything, and which should be documented as a manual and kept for reference and inspection. This is very important. If a regulator comes to the premises, manufacturing premises, manufacturers need to show that, okay, this is our manual which, are, which we are following. And that manual will cover all things, the standards of the equipment, standards of the raw materials, standards of the processing, manufacturing processes, standards for the testing of the drug, everything. So adherence to reference standards and SOP, this is also one of the requirement of GMP. Means, first, what are the reference standards? What are the reference SOPs? Means which SOP, standard operating procedures, which to follow, this is important. So the five M's are very important. GMP means how to achieve quality. So five M's means the quality materials, the quality machines, the quality manpower, quality methods. But above this, the most important thing is what is the mentality of the manufacturer. So this is the most important M, the fifth M. What is the mindset? You might be having very good machinery, imported machinery, equipment in the factory. You might be having good building, but if the mentality of the manufacturer is not uh, sincere, then you cannot produce quality product. So that's very important, right? Most of the spurious drugs, they are manufactured by the intelligent manufacturers. <laughs> so sincerity is required, huh. right? So that is why sometimes the so-called counterfeit medicines, the so-called spurious medicines, they are better than the true medicines effect wise but this is happening because if i have taken license on one particular product the other person he might be making the same product in the same name and sending to the market so that is a spurious step without license he is manufacturing and he is also violating the ipr so you are our iprc so quality wise they are not poor but the regulatory provisions wise they are wrong so this is very important. So adoption of GMP leads to the quality of a formulation or a bulk drug on the on the, uh, on the basis of the quality of those producing it. GMP is the magic key that opens the door of the quality. So without GMP, you cannot think of achieving quality, quality product. And quality, quality is the denominator of the value of the product. And value means? If you have a quality product, that will give confidence to the consumer to use that product. Why the consumer again and again wants a particular brand? Why? Because he's confident that, okay, only this medicine will work on me. Right? Even for crossing, you know, that they go for a particular medicine, particular brand. Similarly, the practitioner, why he prescribes a particular brand? Because he's confident that, okay, this particular product is of quality, acceptable quality. Is that good? And third thing is the regulator should also have a confidence in that. So that is why sometimes if some a complaint comes to the regulator or uh, 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 some other thing, uh, means, uh, uh, unpleasant thing happens, uh, uh, and then the regulator, when it comes to the notice of regulator, but if uh, um, the regulator knows that okay this product is from this company he has that confidence that okay it, uh, this information is wrong or like that so quality is the denominator of the value of uh, value of the product in terms of confidence in the product by the consumer by the practitioner by the regulator so quality can never be attained accidentally or by chance it's not an accidental phenomenon and quality is always a result of intelligent thinking, intelligent planning, and continuous efforts. Means how to manufacture the product. For that, you need to plan, you need to put the things in place, and then you start working there. So there must be a will. So will means mentality, the mindset. To produce superior things and adopting GMP is the key for manufacturing quality medicine. And these are the essentials of GMP. The first essential is quality assurance of 
all aspects of production from the starting materials. When I say starting materials, the raw materials, the excipients, preservatives, the antioxidants, whatever is used in, in preparing capsule, tablets, syrups or whatever. So all material, even the packing material. So packing material should, be, should also be of the standard quality. Premises, the size of the room, what should be the paint on the walls? angles of the walls now under GMP condition you cannot have wall like this because there is a possibility for accumulation of dust it should be round it should be round it cannot be like this okay. supremises and then if you are uh, if you are going to manufacture two different kinds of products those cannot be uh, manufactured under the same premises neither there should be separate sections so all those things are important and equipment to the uh, equipment and to the training and personalization he is even time and again all those people those who are involved in the manufacturing in the testing and uh, in the quality assurance system they need to be given training time and again so capacity building training and even the personal hygiene of the staff all those who, are, who go to the uh, manufacturing devices their medical checks up, uh, checkups are required periodically, six months in the or once a year. And if someone is suffering from some infectious disease or like this, they are kept out of the uh, manufacturing premises. And the third is uh, detailed written procedure. This is very important. The first is premises means the premises means the premises, manufacturing, building, equipment, persons, everything. Then the procedures. The procedures they have to be written have to be written written for each process that could affect the quality of the finished product and third is system to provide documented proof that correct procedures are consistently followed at each step in manufacturing process every time your product is made means every time when you will make a particular product you will have to follow the same procedures as you have documented you have put in the record or you have to maintain those registers so manufacturing aspects so gmp means have two aspects one is manufacturing part how to manufacture and second is how to ensure quality so manufacturing and quality assurance they go side by side you cannot separate them and these are the provisions of gmp for ayurveda siddha and unani medicines as per our drugs and cosmetic act and rules so rule 157 of the drugs and cosmetic rules it talks about gmp compliance and without gmp compliance the license for manufacturing of ayurveda siddha unani drugs cannot be given by the authority so first you need to have gmp compliance and then the license is given or if the person is having if the company is having some old license and if that license is to be renewed this gmp compliance is so rule 157 of the drugs and cosmetic rules provides the requirement of GMP compliance for grant or renewal of the license to manufacture Ayurveda Siddha Unani medicines and this concept of GMP initially this concept was very preliminary very small it came in 1970 since 1970 we have tried to enforce GMP but in in a comprehensive manner it was introduced in 2003 and then it was later amended in 2010 and in our GMP guidelines we have also included non-herbal formulations also how to manufacture the normal herbal mineral formulations or the metallic or mineral based formulations so that is also there and that was done in 2010 and schedule T under rule 157 it prescribes the GMP guidelines and what are the GMP guidelines that I tell you and the supplementary guidelines for the manufacturing of mineral or metal based formulation these are also included in schedule T since March 2009 so in the last around um, this, uh, 14 years means many of our manufacturing uh, units they have acquired GMP compliance but still some problem is there because in our country the, the act is central the rules are central they are made by the central government they are made by the parliament but the enforcement of the rules enforcement of the legal provisions they are in the hands of the state government and the state governments they have and you know in our country we have 36 states and union territories so 
the enforcement varies from state to state. So some of the states where the regulatory capacity is weak or the regulators are not sufficient, so there is some problem, right? So our GMP compliance by the industry is not 100%. And what is the percentage uh, that I will tell you later. Now, in Schedule D, under Rule 157, there are two parts, Part 1 and Part 2. In the Part 1 means it talks about the factory premises. See, what are the requirements? What should be there in the factory when you start manufacturing a product? Means the material, the area, how, uh, means what should be the condition of the area from where you receive the raw materials? means right from the beginning how you store the raw material okay. receiving and storing raw materials manufacturing process area quality control section where you will keep the finished goods and where you will keep the rejected goods all these things are there in the factory premises provisions and what are the general requirements no you might have constructed a very good building but if the surroundings are polluted, again, that is not ideal. So location and the surroundings of the factory, of the manufacturing premises, that is also important. It should be safe, right? Safe and the water supply, etc., that should also be adequate and it should be safe. It cannot be that you are having a factory in an area Clearance or the approval from the pollution control board that is also required. Similarly, clearance from the fire safety department that is also required. Similarly, clearances from the industry department that is also required. So, so many things are there. So, location and surroundings, building with proper hygienic conditions, fire safety measures, free from insects and rodents, very important because the insects and rodents, they are, they are uh, they, they are carriers of the contaminants. Yeah. Okay, if you have manufactured a good product, but if the rodents are there, means from one place to the other place, they can carry the contaminants or even the adulterants and they can enter into the products. Water supply system, disposable of waste, containers cleaning, how to clean the containers, what kind of containers are required, then the stores for the raw materials, stores for the packing materials, stores for the finished goods, working space, how much space is required where you are um, manufacturing tablets, how much space is required where you are making capsules or like that, so everything. And then the, uh, the the health, clothing, sanitation and means the the clothing which you will provide to the manufacturers, means the person, those who are involved in manufacturing, mask, headgear and then the gown, every time. So all these things, uh, they come under this uh, general requirements. The sanitation hygiene of the workers, medical services, machinery and equipment, batch manufacturing records, distribution records, records of the market complaints means if uh, uh, some product and uh, uh, you know that uh, today it is mandatory to uh, to write on the, uh, on the on the on the pack the phone number, the complete address of the manufacturer, so that if any consumer or if any regulator makes a complaint, so that it should come to the uh, manufacturer and. All those complaints, those need to be recorded. And how those complaints have been addressed, this is also responsibility of the manufacturer. And in each uh, manufacturing unit, a small quality control section, this uh, this provision we have provided in our in our GMP. And then the if the product which has to be very sterile, like eye drops, so there are specific uh, other requirements separate enclosed manner. You cannot make a manufacturing of sterile product in an open area. So a dedicated space, dedicated equipment uh, is required. Enclosed manufacturing area, packing material should be separate, finished goods should be kept separate, working space uh, separate, then the medical services precautions against means the person who is having any infection, even 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 a normal cough, he cannot go to, uh, uh, to that area where this sterile product is going to be. So means the provisions are a bit stringent for the product which are sterile. And the part two of the schedule T, means the first part was building and the requirements, factory premises. Second is related to equipment. So uh, we have three components under this. 
in the first uh, component of uh, this uh, part two, we have given the list of uh, machinery, equipment, and minimum manufacturing premises required for the manufacturing of various categories of medicines of Ayurveda, Siddha system. Ayurveda and Siddha. In the second part, we have given the list of equipment, machinery, and other things for the Unani system. It's Ayurveda and Siddha, they are quite similar, so that is why the same uh, provisions are there. The Unani system medicine, it has come from uh, other country, but now it is totally assimilated into the Indian system of medicine. And for, but some a lot of uh, differences are there. That is why this uh, uh, the manufacture of various categories of medicines of uh, Unani system and the, uh, the list of machinery is different. And then for the quality control section, what is the minimum requirement of the equipment and the manpower and the reference books? Which kinds of books are required there? Like the pharmacopoeia is required. And the fingerprint uh, atlas of uh, this pharmacopoeia drug that, and that is required. So all those things, these are the list of equipment, treatment, and parking house quality control uh, section. Now these are the principles. These are very important. Design and install the facilities and equipment properly. Properly means as prescribed. Second is follow written procedures and instructions. Every for everything. Means even if the raw material is to be acquired, so the truck has come, truck with the raw material has come, how to take out the material from the truck and to put in the godown or in the storage area. So that procedure is also defined, right? Follow written procedures and instructions, document work and whatever you do, if some step you have missed, okay, document it. Okay, this has been missed. So when the product is for the quality check, and if it does not uh, um, uh, uh, qualify the quality, it means that product has to be rejected, right? So it means the step which you missed, that was important. So whatever is missed, that has to be documented. Document work and validate work. So what is document work and validate work means? If you have missed the steps, but get it validated, it means do the testing. If the quality is not of uh, desired extent, definitely you will reject that product. So monitor facilities and equipment, write step-by-step -step operating procedures and work on the instruction, design, develop and demonstrate job competence, means time and again training of the uh, workers that is required, protect against contamination, this is very important, contamination that has to be protected at all levels, right from raw material to the finished product, that has to be. Sometimes you have good manufacturing facilities, but storage area is poor, the packing material is poor, so there are chances of contamination. So protect from contamination, control components and product related processes, conduct planned and periodic audits. Means there are two types of audits. One is planned, means okay, you will say that okay, uh, in, in the coming year we will do the audit of the equipment and equipment, uh, of all the records and uh, uh, once in a year. But do it untimely also, unplanned also. Because that will surprise check, sudden check. So if you follow uh, GMP and if that GMP implementation is effective, what cost you will get? What are the cost benefits? So positive cost benefits of GMP compliance of the quality assurance compliance are good plant layout, smooth workflows, efficient documentation systems, well controlled process, good stores layouts and stores records. These are the good manufacturing practices. Please, in summary, if I say what is good GMP, good manufacturing practice, this is all about what has been said in under point number one. Uh, and second is reduction in work in process and inventory holding cost. It's also because if the same work is done again and again, it means it will add to the cost. So GMP reduces that. GMP reduces the rework because it will reduce the error. Rather the errors will be zero. Avoidance of cost of quality failure. Because the product is not of quality, what you will do? It means that it is near wastage. So awareness of cost of quality failure, cost of waste of, cost of uh, rework, cost of recall, cost of consumer compensation and cost of loss of company reputation. So if you, you want to avoid all these things, if you want to prevent all these things, uh, you will have to follow GMP. So these are the documents for GMP compliance, the policies, means what is the policy of the company? What is the policy of the company? Or you can say the vision and mission statement. You might have seen uh, 
just at the entry of the manufacturing premises they they uh, they, they keep a one line one sentence that okay this is the uh, motto of the company or uh, the vision or the mission statement of the company right sops this is very important then the specifications specification of the equipment specification of the stand uh, the raw material specification of the packing material everything master formula record batch manufacturing records manuals means uh, the manuals which the worker will see time and again and then the master plans calibration and validation protocols calibration means if you are using one particular instrument you have to see whether it is performing in the same way or not so calibration is required at regular interval forms and the formats what kind of forms you will use like for for the testing order the certificate of analysis so that should be a, a, a standard format should be there right and uh, uh, the formats uh, uh, like for a rejection of drugs or for the acceptance of quality so all those things have to be standard and then a record record keeping means which uh, no the, the simple principle the material which comes first to the premises that should you use first fifa first in first out you might be purchasing materials but the principle under gmp is the material which comes first whether it's the packing material whether it is a raw material if it has come first it has to be used first you cannot do that okay the material which has come afterwards that may be used first and that is wrong that is not a healthy practice that is not a right practice so these are the qualities of good documentations it must be accurate must be clear means the instruction should be clear the worker should not be confused he should not be in a position that okay he is not understanding what uh, what is written in the manual so accurate clear complete not the half not the incomplete it should be complete every step then the consistent same in a deliver means it should not be very confusing it should not be very means ambiguity free then the legible means if it is a handwritten or even if it type it should be legible then a timely direct authentic and authorized it has to be authorized some, by someone means you cannot have sop that who um, if uh, someone authorized person has not signed that it could be a manipulation like someone who is not authorized to 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 sign the sop document and someone has kept that document on the wall and the workers they are starting to deliver yes. so it has to be authentic authentic and it has to be authorized authorized means means uh, the, the 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 manager the manager of quality assurance section or the manager of uh, uh, the manufacturing uh, section he must have given the authority for the, to that worker that okay you can use this okay so all these uh, these are the qualities of the good documentation and how can quality be achieved is again time again you will have to do the practice again and again by practice by following professional guidance means sometimes you need to consult seniors you need to consult the external experts so by following professional guidance by keeping records by adopting corrective measures by sometimes what happens you might have uh, done some uh, something wrong but that wrong has to be corrected so that also need to be recorded by regular monitoring by complying with the regulation this is also very important because whatever uh, regulations are in place like in uh, our country we have drugs and cosmetic act and rules so whatever regulations are there those also need to be. you might be having uh, best of the sops you might be having best of the, uh, your in house standards but without observing without complying to the regulations uh, that is immaterial if uh, you are not following those regulations and by culturing the right attitude and the right product means your mindset that should be clear that okay the objective is to attain quality to attain quality to attain quality right so that uh, a culture needs to be developed and if you see if you comply comply to the gmp what benefits you will get gmp boost confidence confidence among the consumer among the practitioner means he is going to prescribe that medicine and it also gives confidence to the regulator that okay this particular product is of quality this is one thing second gmp reduces rework means the steps are less rather zero so you need not do the work the same work again and again so when rework is avoided it means you are saving cost so gmp reduces rework gmp makes good business sense means you become professional gmp 
GMP improves working conditions. GMP enhances prestige, prestige of the manufacturer, prestige of the product. GMP ensures quality. GMP augments trade. And overall, GMP accords overall socio-economic value of the product and the manufacturers. Why particular brands they are more popular? Why the people they purchase on the Apple uh, laptop or the Apple? It means so that is the thing. And these are some of the constraints and challenges in complying to GMPs. Because GMP means if you want to achieve GMP, if you want to comply to the GMP, you need to do investment. And sometimes this investment could be heavy. Depending upon the gaps which you have in your manufacturing premises. Unfortunately, in our country, we have 8,667 uh, licensed manufacturers of Ayurveda, Siddha, Yunani, Homepathy products. About 80 to 90 percent, they are of micro and small scale. They are the big players. They don't have big money, right? So investment becomes a problem for them. So this is the challenge or this is the constraint for us. Might be producing even one single particular product are affecting unit to GMP compliant some investment. Again, as I said in the beginning, under that 5M, the mentality of the manufacturer. Sometimes the manufacturer, he thinks, he has the mentality that this is an expenditure. Actually, it is not expenditure. It is investment. If you invest, the product will have the credibility. Right? And once we have a credible product, it will bring you the cost, right, the return. So optimal investment for creation and maintenance of required infrastructure, that is a challenge, particularly for those, those who are of micro, small, medium scale. So micro, small and medium scale enterprises, they may fail or they may shirk from investment. Because the GMP, these are the regulatory guidelines. Because without complying to this, you cannot get the license. So, if you cannot get the license, it means you cannot make from, you cannot. So this, is, so, this is one of the challenge as well as the constraint. Second is, now the men, this, uh, the manpower, the pharmacy manpower of traditional medicine. There are very few institutions from where the pharmacy trained persons are coming uh, within five years. Lack of qualified and trained technical and regulatory manpower. Even the regulatory manpower is not so much trained. Because the courses are not there. For regulation, there are no separate courses. <laughs> right? So pharmacy education of traditional medicine not developed to the desired extent, nor the regulatory capacity auditors go to the mark. Inconsistent quality. Plant material, that itself is a problem. Because the same plant material, it comes from different sources. And the geo geoclimatic conditions of those areas are different so the quality varies quality of the raw material it varies from place to place you cannot have the same quality raw material this is also a big challenge for uh, traditional medicine right so inconsistent quality of plant raw materials varied resources of medicine plant varied geoclimatic condition asymmetrical harvesting practices right and similarly asymmetrical storage practices similarly the asymmetrical transportation practices how you are transporting the material. So, two questions. And another is agrotechnology, means the scientific methods of cultivation of medicine plants, these are not developed for every medicine plant. So, agrotechnology for cultivation of all medicine plants, not developed. So, the, it is a constraint for getting quality raw material from cultivated source. Like in our country, are only 150 medicine plants they are cultivated because their agrotechnology is available. That has been developed by the scientists, agrotechnics. Then the limitations of conventional manufacturing technology means the conventional manufacturing technology cannot be applied totally to the traditional medicine products because the principles, otherwise the principles of traditional medicine, they will be compromised. Right? So limitations of the conventional manufacturing technology and quality testing tools because the principles of manufacturing and quality check of traditional medicines are compromised. So the regulations say that, okay, you do GMP, means everything, testing of the drugs, and the testing of the drugs, 
we have subjective parameters traditional medicine has subjective parameters but we, uh, but if from the regulatory perspective you have to show the objective evidence laboratory based evidence so this is a challenge how to meet that and another is the reference standard and the objective parameters of quality assurance these are not prescribed for many of the uh, materials for many of the materials right so outcome products of the manufacturers may not have reliable evidence of quality owing to subjective bias the practitioner might be saying that okay i am making very good uh, medicine but where is the evidence right so as on date uh, we have uh, 8,667 uh, manufacturing units in the country for Ayurveda, Siddha, Unani and homeopathy drugs and mainly these are 80% I told you more than 80 to 90% they are uh, micro, small and medium enterprises and out of these 43 they are run by the government by the central government or by the state governments because uh, the governments they also need uh, manufacturing units because the medicines from their manufacturers from those uh, units they are supplied to the government dispensaries and to the government hospitals just Ayurveda like this and uh, unfortunately as on date because I told you that enforcement of the legal provision that is in the hand of the state government so as on date still 13.6 units are non GMC compliant in the country and uh, with these words I conclude my presentation and I would say that we are also looking for inclusion of SOA RIPA drug manufacturers and the SOA RIPA drugs under the GMP guidelines thank you How many other manufacturers here? <laughs> no? Okay. Yes. Please. Uh, Dr. Kartuji, I have one you know, small question. Uh, about the, the raw materials like uh, Yunani and uh, Ayurvedic. Suppose same herbal plant and you have like suppose you told this morning in that uh, aloe vera uh, uh, that's already in Ayurveda and Yunani but the, sometimes you have the part of the plant in the, used in a different but the, whether the Ayurvedic and Yunani is the same part of the plant used or different part of the plant is used so then if it's, if it's used a different part of the plant what do we do the process Could be quality standards of the fruit part so that is mentioned it is not of the whole plant it is the plant part wise we can i think we can take only one question yeah uh, hello yeah thank you sir um actually my question is slightly multifaceted um i'm wondering if because everything you've explained is related to official drug manufacturing facilities. So could you just explain really briefly um, how these regulations would change, for example, for uh, raw material producers, medicine collectors, then for dispensing pharmacies, like small clinics where maybe they'll be mixing powders or liquid medicinals and dispensing in small scale. And then finally, for um, the borderline between medicine and food, like food supplements, herbal teas, mm -hmm. do they have to all follow these GMP guidelines as well? I think uh, you might be present in the previous session also. I told that uh, when I say traditional medicines, so in the traditional medicines, so we have four different kinds of formulations. One, the true medicinal formulation and second the medicinal formulation but they also have nutritive value like some of the formulations so, so, so they are just like food supplements but we don't call them food supplements and these kinds of products they are going out of India as supplements food supplements because the importing country they want to 
register them or to give them market authorization as food supplement not as a prescription product the only difference what will happen that on the food product on the label you can write you cannot write down any indication or any use but in the medicinal product uh, the indication is there so this way so in our country also if it is a medicine so indications they have to be submitted to the regulator and accordingly that uh, clearance is given to the now so now the product has been manufactured so on the label you have to indicate the, uh, uh, this uh, indications and the uses and when that product goes to the pharmacy or to the to the to the hospital or to the dispensary now it is the prerogative of the practitioners what for what indication that has to be used only major indications or major uses they are written on the label but it is for the practitioner because uh, uh, in traditional medicine the practitioners they believe in the whole system not only a one particular organ or one particular disease because the systems they are health oriented uh, not the disease oriented this is one thing and for individual practitioners those who combines different house for their individual patients they do not come under the purview of the drugs and cosmetic act they are exempted because this factory regulations these are not applicable to them so individual practitioner individual pharmacist who combines different um, uh, herbs to make a decoction or some powder they are allowed right but again for them there are different ethics so the code of ethics professional etiquettes are different for them but they do not come under the provisions of the drugs and cosmetic act We apologize for not being able to take more questions, but uh, definitely, if you have any further questions, you can ask uh, Dr. Kattar to his email address anytime, as he has said right now. So before that, we would like to thank Dr. Kattar for his two very, in, uh, very informative sessions, and uh, Dr. Rahman for chairing the session. And before that, we would like to offer a scarf to Dr. Kattar before he leaves. <laughs> we would uh, we would also like to thank the Ministry of Irish Government of India for bearing Mr. Dr. Kattur's flight expenses for this conference.